Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hyra Canucks and I'm super excited to work inside the new Fantex Evolve Micro ATX TG Edition case because this Micro ATX trend is quite hot for 2017, so let's see if it's all worth it for $130. And obviously I decided to save the peeling off on camera. Nice. Introducing the new OCZ VX500 solid state drives from Toshiba. It offers great, well balanced speeds built with MLC NAND flash for superior endurance and is also backed by a five year advanced warranty program. Learn more about the VX500 at OCZ.com. Now the first thing I want to cover is the color, because the sandblasted aluminum exterior comes in silver, dark grey and matte black colors, so three versions in total, and the black one I have here is the only one that I haven't really worked in in the past, so it feels like a new experience. The color is very similar to the matte black iPhone, but picks up finger oils uh, that are a lot more visible compared to the silver or grey models, and you know, if you have a microfiber cloth, a simple wipe does the trick. Size-wise, it's a bit on the bigger side for a micro ATX category, just slightly shorter and slimmer compared to the Evolve ATX Tower, you know, it's that middle sibling in the Evolve family, and it's also the largest one compared to the Define Mini C or the Inwin 301. The way I see it, people who buy this most likely are taking advantage of its size for water cooling, you know, it's not super space efficient as it prioritizes compatibility over size. I really love the swivel mount on the side panels, which is excellent for accessing the interior or simply removing the panel, and you can even open the doors for extra cooling if needed. The magnetic attachment is just okay, it's not too strong, and so, you know, they might like flip out if you're carrying the case in the wrong way. But there is soft padding around the panel to avoid this harsh contact and create a tighter seal for airflow purposes. The reflective nature of the tempered glass is absolutely gorgeous, something you start to appreciate more as it doesn't scratch and adds this new feel to your case but keep in mind dust accumulation is a thing and needs to be cleaned once in a while the included stickers are a nice reminder of a quality panel they are removable but will leave residue uh, but it can be easily wiped off so don't worry and i do love how the front of the glass panel follows the contours of the front of the case for design cohesion and this merge of color aluminum and glass adds a really fine sense of premium that also always lives with the Evolve line. The blackout perimeter on the glass is something of a staple, but what's really new is the silk screen on the rear side panel that camouflages most of this area, but exposes those dual SSD caddies to show off your drives. It's a gorgeous way to incorporate the glass reflection without compromising the reveal of all the cables underneath it, uh, plus showing off the right amount of SSDs, and it's a truly nice touch for extra design points. The I.O. is hidden behind the aluminum cover at the front with USB 3 and audio jacks, plus a button to cycle color for built-in lighting. And that is something Fantex have been doing right for so long. You know, it's not flashy, and you can also add this LED strip that will sync up to the case lighting for best in-class case illumination. The front is covered with a fine dust filter with dual 120 and 140mm fans supported by default, with two 140mm fans included. On the inside, the floor of the power supply chamber can be removed for either installation of a pump bracket which is included uh, and in this scenario you do lose out on those dual drive caddies for three or two and a half inch drives and you can remove the walls completely to expand the front radiator support to 360 millimeters but only if the thickness of the rad is somewhere around the 120 millimeter mark as nothing thicker would fit. The top airflow is pretty much completely closed off, which is nice for visuals, you know, from the top, but there's a bit of a compromise here. Ventilation is available on both sides. That looks pretty cool, you know, if you have illumination from interior, plus the panel has a little bit of height to it for air to exit through the back. But ultimately, this top airflow exhaust is meant to be, you know, for maybe very low RPM fans, as it would otherwise introduce turbulent rebounds back into the chassis. And here you can go with dual 120 or 140 millimeter fans, which are properly offset on mounting strips, and the top panel sits securely on this push to secure pins along with the thumb screw. 
As part of accessories, we get a pump bracket, a few zip ties. I absolutely love this organization box for screws, along with this uh, adhesive Fantex logo that is up to you for application as there's only other one Fantex logo on the side of the shroud, keeping things minimal. The interior is very open, follows the same footsteps of the mid tower with that open power supply chamber so you can show off your unit. But keep in mind for short units like I have here, which is 140 millimeters, this Cougar power supply, you can see where it ends and it's not exactly pretty. I do not like how the frame around the PCI slots is closed off. It is very difficult to get the screwdriver in there and especially annoying trying to secure thumb screws with really tall graphics cards. And why do they tighten the thumb screws so hard uh, in the factory? Just really difficult to remove them in the first place. A removable power supply dust filter is here at the back along with pre-installed motherboard standoffs and here is the finish system. So the first thing you might notice is how large this space seems for a micro ATX motherboard and I would agree. Fantix went for a more spacious layout to allow for more comfortable assembly but this case is really targeted for custom water cooling. So for example, they've improved on the front intake to be less restrictive. There's a lot of uh, headroom above the motherboard for fan and radiator installation, which if not populated, seems a little bit wasteful and not exactly efficient. And I would rather see them lower the height of the case and stick to horizontal airflow only, you know, seeing the top panel is pretty closed off anyway. Cable management is excellent as usual, rubber grommets in all the right places to not interfere with anything uh, of the cooling, appropriate cutouts underneath the motherboard for I.O. and USB, and really nothing to complain about on the interior. And this being a mini version of the Evolve ATX, we see many similar approaches to cable management with enough room in the back. There's Velcro straps all around the rubber grommets and also on top of the motherboard area, which is incredibly helpful with any AIO setup uh, making things flat makes no effort at all. So the panel closes just fine and you can enjoy this very unique visual that you probably have never seen on a PC enclosure before. And so this is a very nice upgrade in the Evolve family, catching up with the Swivel TG panels and joining the Micro ATX bandwagon for 2017. It is a bit expensive though for market competition since other options are under $100 uh, within the Micro ATX space. And it seems that Fantix is not really afraid to step up the quality game and target committed enthusiasts who either appreciate the design or want to take advantage of all that spacious water cooling support and room or both design and water cooling. And so the Evolve Micro ATX TG is not going to be popular among the mainstream, but it sure is a nice treat for the emerging Micro ATX community and we're giving it the Hardware Canucks damn good award because it doesn't get better than this. So thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe for more similar content and let us know what you think of this case and we'll see you in the next video.